G'day guys and gal, most of you know that I have a big thing for the Eldar, and not just because my ultimate fantasy is getting crushed by the powerful thighs of a dark Eldar succubus. I love their aesthetic and the way they seem to be able to subtly nudge the strands of fate, creating these unforeseen butterfly effects that completely change the outcome of key moments in the lore. The resurrection of Gilliman, the survival of Vulcan, even saving the Imperium and preventing the Cabal's prophecy was all because of interventions by the Eldar. Well, mostly Eldrad, but the Elder can take the dub. It's just a shame that GW seems to despise them. Although we have recently gotten a range refresh on the tabletop, the first large update in nearly 20 years, Eldar lore has recently fell completely on its face. The Psychic Awakening event was promised to be the Elder's rise to the forefront, taking them from a bunch of sissy space cells on the edge of getting genocided to a galactic player once again, kind of like how the Necrons are at the moment. But no, in their own Yanari novels, they run around in circles, gather a crew, and then all get their asses beaten by a small shard of a random mini boss that Slanesh just pulled out of their gaping teeth. Asshole. The shard, which was literally just a small fragment of the power of one Slaneshi demon, was enough to almost beat the entire Yanari, the best the Eldar have. Bruh. The books were then discontinued, and as far as I know, the Yanari are twiddling their thumbs and back on the bench. It was very disappointing and very poor by GW, but I can either complain about it or I can tell you exactly what they should have done instead and what they could still do to give the Elder the respect whilst at the same time maintaining the status quo. Before we get started, it's pretty common knowledge that the the number one goal in life is to get laid. Everything a man does, he does to improve the chances of getting laid or increasing the caliber of people to lay. This isn't an opinion, it's just science. Well today my fellow scientists, I present you with a shortcut, Manscaped. Women literally poll manscaping and hygiene as their highest priorities for a potential partner, and I back that in. I've met beautiful men and women with hygiene issues that, that turn from an 8 to a 2 in an instant. So how does Manscaped help with this? By creating the ultimate getting laid package, the Platinum Package 4.0. Everything in here is designed to sort out any hygiene issues you may have. The Lawnmower 4.0 gives you a nick-free trim of your man downstairs. The ball deodorant and toner annihilates stinky wiener. The shampoo, conditioner, and deodorant all have this mature, refined scent that will keep you smelling fresh. Not to mention a high quality travel bag and a very comfy pair of boxes. All of these have been bundled into an insanely well-valued package. You are saving hundreds over buying these items individually. Then to save even more money, use my link below for an additional 20% off and free international shipping. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and dramatically improving your chances of getting laid. Today, I will briefly go over the completely trash lore us elder players have been given before they diving into exactly what GW should and could still do to fix it. Oh, let's get into it. Alright, so I touched on it briefly in the intro, but why are us Eldar fans mad? Well, it isn't just the recent Psychic Awakening Yanari bullshit. Over the years, the Elder have received some dope lore, showing them as a force to be reckoned with and not out of the game yet. Other lore has them painted as retards who fail to fight off a single Space Marine chapter from their craft world, despite having millions of Elder, including thousands of Aspect Warriors, who are more or less equal to Space Marines, Warlocks, Farseers, and an avatar of their fucking War God. The Elder are often used as the other faction's punching bag, with the avatars of Cain being a walking meme, since every single character who doesn't wear a helmet in battle has managed to beat one. Avatars should be Primarch tier, maybe slightly lower, not fucking Space Marine Captain tier. So when GW announced the Psychic Awakening and the primary role the Elder would play, we were cautious but hopeful. Well, just like a white van with free candy written on it, we got pulled inside and our innocence was stolen. Despite a decent start, with interesting new characters such as Yvrain, the Visarach, and the Hectic Yinkani, and a cool setup, that being our band of heroes slowly but surely upgrading their gear and expanding their Pokemon collection in preparation for a gnarly climax, it all just falls flat on its face. Let me set the scene. Yvrain is travelling from Craftworld to Craftworld, gathering supporters and finding the legendary Crone Swords, god-tier Eldar weapons that she begins giving to her greatest allies. She had one, the Visarach had one, the Yinkani had another, Prince Uriel also had one with the Spear of Twilight. It was also revealed that if they retrieved all the Crone Swords, then their death god Yened would awaken and fight Slaanesh for supremacy over the souls of the Eldar race. Previously, every single Eldar would have had to die for Yened to awaken, but now there was a way better solution. Yvrain also manages to gather a Solitaire, aka a Harlequin Demigod, as well as the largest and greatest avatar of Cain Shard. Not to mention, pretty much all the Phoenix Lords join in as well. So you've got the Elder, 
united with Harlequins, Craft Welders, and Dark Elder, their best characters who have all gotten a power boost. And what do they fight? What is this final boss? A fucking hologram of a random new Keeper of Secrets. And they almost lose. This sliver of the Keeper kills the Solitaire, Yvrain, and the Visarach before finally getting taken down at large cost. Then Yvrain and the Visarach are brought back to life. The Keeper is then like, Lamau, that was just 1% of my power. Also, the final Kron Sword is in Slaanesh's palace, so literally inaccessible. See you later, nerds. And that is where the lore leaves us. Are you fucking kidding me? But enough complaining, what should have GW done to sort this out? Well, the setup was pretty cool, an absolute dream team of Eldar taking on Slaanesh. Since Slaanesh has been so useless and sidelined in the lore recently, it would have also been a great spotlight for Slaanesh players. The last thing before I get into the improved version, I want to remind you guys and gal about Sira Gorach's prophecy, which more or less states that Slaanesh, in her sluttiness, will be her own undoing. Her actions will directly bring upon her own downfall. Keep that in mind. So here is what should have gone down. The heroes unite, level up, and get ready to take on Shalax the Hellbane, the chosen of Slaanesh and Bane of the Elder, just like they do in canon. They battle Shalax the, not some fucking mirage, but the actual Shalax the herself. Whole squad is present, with four out of the five crone swords. We have our bitch Yvrain, the most badass simp of the Visarach, Uriel with his spear, Eldrad shooting lightning out of his dick hole, and yes, the very demonic looking Yinkani with his big ass crone sword. Not to mention the war shard of Kane and the Solitaire, and fuck it, let's just throw some Phoenix Lords in as well. It's a hectic battle, pew pew, skirt skirt, but instead of everyone getting wrecked, they hold on with the Solitaire going beast mode and carrying the team. Eventually, after a devastating battle that kills or maims all the Yanari present, including some of the Phoenix Lords, except our main lineup, Shalaxti is beaten, but instead of banishing her, the Solitaire uses some Harlequin Ninjutsu to turn Shalaxti into a living portal that leads to the Dark Prince's realm. See, with Slaanesh granting Shalaxti the, a large shard of her own power, she created an extremely strong bond between Shalaxti and the realm of Slaanesh, a bond that the Solitaire was able to exploit. This also ties into Sir Gorach's prophecy in which the actions of Slaanesh would lead to her undoing. Hence Slaanesh trying so hard to crush the Inari gave them access to her realm. Shalaxti screams in agony, not the fun kind, as our heroes walk through the portal and begin the galaxy's most hectic heist movie. See, in the Dark Prince's realm there are six domains that act as a ring around Slaanesh's palace. Each domain, which is more like a layer, provides a different temptation. Our heroes must struggle through each temptation, which also gives us, the reader, a really good deep dive into the inner insecurities and mindset of each of our heroes. Each layer should test one of our heroes to the max. Perhaps the circle of power tempts the war shard. The circle of carnality would exploit the love the Visarach has for Yvrain. The circle of vainglory would tempt Yvrain, etc, etc. Through effort, meaningful moments and challenge, our heroes heroes struggle through and reach the palace. Everyone's sanity has been pushed to the brink, other than the Incarni and the Solitaire, who seem quite unbothered by what they had just experienced. They finally reach the palace, yet they are shocked to find it empty and quiet. They had expected hectic orgies and shit, but all they see is the final crone sword. It's obviously a trap and they hold back, but then the Solitaire walks forward and grabs it at the protest of the others. He is racked with pain and is petrified, turning to stone as a dark seductive laughter booms across the palace. The palace lights up with sound and stimulus. Countless demons materialize and join the laughter. It's horrific, with only the presence of the crone swords shielding our heroes from instantly losing their sanity and joining in on the depravity. A hermaphrodite demon, not quite a demon but more so an avatar of Slaanesh, a fingernail of Slaanesh, approaches them. It is as terrible as it is beautiful, with the heroes struggling to tear their eyes away from it as they feel blood running down their faces from their tear ducts. It is said that gazing upon Slaanesh will instantly corrupt anyone, no matter their will. However, our heroes are not just anyone and with the power of the crone swords, they can resist. That as well as the fact that this is just a small representation of Slaanesh and not the true god. Although despite this, they are frozen in place and can barely move from the gaze upon them. The Slaanesh thing begins mocking them, saying it has followed their progress from as soon as they entered her realm, and now they have delivered all the threats to Slaanesh's dominion on a platter. She will feast on the souls of the Elders greatest and have the crone swords locked in the palace forever. Yvrain can't believe this is it. She can't move. She can't hear her god. The Incarni is similarly frozen, unable to do anything. The war shard roars and breaks free from its psychological bonds. Kane and Slaanesh are mortal enemies and he refuses to be undone like this. The sliver of Slaanesh merely smiles and obliterates the war shard with a single hit. Only his gem heart and sword survive with the rest of his body destroyed. 
Slanesh turns back to the elder. The time for mocking is done. It is time to consume. Her jaws distend and open impossibly wide as she begins to grow. She will devour them both physically, mentally, and spiritually. The terrible, attractive visage peels away to reveal a distorted monster made of teeth and tentacle. But then, laughter. Cackling over the top laughter, the Slanesh monster stops, pulling its tentacles and teeth back into its original form and turns. The solitaire is standing there, laughing, all five crone swords floating around him. The war shard's demise was not in vain, but the ultimate distraction to allow the solitaire to collect the swords from each of the heroes. Yvrain hadn't even noticed, but how? He was petrified, frozen. Slanesh is equally confused until the solitaire begins to grow in size, his mask distending into a vicious grin. The solitaire was Sir Gorach all along. Not for the first time, the laughing god has taken the form of one of his most powerful sons but definitely for the last. With a flick of movement, the crone swords smash together. Five become one as a deadly jagged sword emerges. The Shard of Slanesh lunges at Sirogorach, but the Harlequin God laughs as he swipes the blade up, eviscerating the Slanesh thing in a single cut. He then turns to our Eldar heroes who were just freed of their entrapment, and he cuts empty space, ripping open a portal that leads into the webway. Sirogorach tells them to go through and follow the golden path, pointing at the War Shard's gem heart and sword, and telling them to bring it as Kane's role in the universe is not yet done. He then shrinks the Crone Sword and gives it to Yvrain, telling her to take it to a specific planet to perform the awakening of Yuned. The heroes pick up the heart and blade of Cain, with Eldrad shrinking the cane so it's a holdable size. And they run through the portal as the palace begins shaking and Slanesh's scream of rage starts sounding. The entire realm of the Dark Prince vibrates as the entire realm is Slanesh, and Slanesh is the entire realm. Massive spiked tentacles begin sliding around the palace, circling Sir Gorach, who has closed the portal to the webway behind him. Despite it being shut, he needs to hold off Slanesh long enough for the Elder to get through the webway and to safety. He laughs in the face of the Prince of Pleasure as Slanesh attacks. The battle isn't very long, it's very one-sided as Slanesh is many magnitude more powerful than the Laughing God. But even as the God of the Harlequins is torn to shreds and consumed, he still laughs. The Yanari survivors run through the webway and can see what looks like a golden crack surrounded by hordes of demons. Trying to break through it, they charge into the demonic horde, all empowered by their proximity to the combined crone sword. They are a walking meat grinder, banishing demons by the thousands every minute as they carve their way towards the golden crack. They reach it and your brain slices it open with the crone sword. The webway gladly parts open for the crone sword as the crone sword is an elder artifact and responds well to the elder's dimension. They jump through with your brain then using the crone sword to permanently seal the webway behind them. They are back in real space but not just anywhere. They are in the Imperial Dungeon with the radiance of the Golden Throne above them. They have just permanently sealed the webway under Terra, taking off a mountain of pressure from the God Emperor of Mankind. Perhaps freeing his focus to do other stuff, such as saving Gilliman's life when Mortarian injected him with the God Blight. I'll end my retcon here, but it would be cool to see how the Elder get out of being surrounded by 1000 Custodes, or if the Emperor has anything to say to them. Can they get to the specific world to perform the Awakening, or will Slanesh send her greatest champion Fulgrim to stop them. This also ties directly into and fulfills Sir Gorach's prophecy that Slanesh would cause her own undoing, first by sending an empowered Shalaxti, then by allowing the Elder to reach the fifth Crone Sword in an attempt to trap them. The Elder also don't get a clean win here. The War Shard is broken and the Laughing God is dead, which means the Harlequins lose a lot of their power. Slanesh also isn't beaten or dead, however the Elder now have a chance to bring their god back and become a proper player. It also changes the Emperor's recent boost in power from being caused by the opening of the Great Rift to the permanent closing of the webway, which I kinda like as it means the Emperor isn't getting empowered off the galaxy having its asshole torn open. The lore itself would be so awesome, seeing the Elder take on Slanesh, overcoming the circles of temptation, whilst also giving us some good god vs god action. This is what GW should have done, and to be honest can probably still do. All they need to do is track down the real Shalaxti, recruit the Sirogorach Solitaire, then BAM, my lore can do the rest. It can even still work with the Emperor getting empowered by the shutting of the webway. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this just a fanfic wankfest, or would this be the most boss ass Elder lore to ever exist? If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up a major mini, maybe even the Space of Jester. It kind of has context to the video. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more retcon content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.